The Vietnam Head Injury Study is a study of Vietnam veterans with penetrating brain injuries and combat veterans without penetrating brain injuries who also served in Vietnam. There have been four phases of the Vietnam Head Injury Study, starting in the mid-1980s and going all the way through uh, 2012. In those studies, we not only are evaluating uh, post-traumatic epilepsy and other aspects of physical functioning, but we've spent a lot of time studying basic neurobehavioral functions uh, and most recently with an emphasis on social neuroscience. One of the areas of social neuroscience we've been very interested in studying is the study of pro-social behavior. In the study that you're going to hear about today, the pro-social behavior we studied is characterized by altruistic behavior. Altruistic behavior can be both rewarding and punishing. So in a moment, we're going to hear the results of our lesion mapping study, and we'll see how it provides convergent evidence about the brain bases of altruistic behavior in humans. Uh, high resolution CT scans were acquired on 94 uh, Vietnam veterans with TBI. Our uh, lesions uh, were manually traced by a neuropsychiatrist uh, with experience in reading CT scans and reviewed by the principal investigator of the study. Uh, volume and lesion locations uh, uh, were documented using analysis of, of brain lesion software implementing, uh, implemented in Medex. With lesion maps at hand, we apply a method to discover which parts of the brain are involved in donation and punishment decisions. We compare the scores of veterans with injury to different locations of the brain with each other, assuming that damage and spare brain regions might influence behavior. The complex issue is that sophisticated tasks such as altruistic decisions preclude different parts of the brain and you cannot assume that one single area does all the job. So, we use an elaborated approach to analyze the associations between damage patterns and behavior in the task. The so-called machine learning approach we use allows us to draw some interesting conclusions. I would like to show you now the results of the lesion mapping. This image corresponds to um, the overall results of all the lesions observed across the 94 Vietnam veterans. So the hot colors correspond to more subjects contributing to the lesions, and the less warm colors, less subjects. In the next image, we can see uh, the contributions uh, of the lesions in the dorsal medial prefrontal cortex to altruistic punishments. So these regions, uh, when they uh, suffered lesions, were associated with increased altruistic punishment. The red regions here, we observe here in the Perisuvian area, uh, were associated with decreased altruistic punishment. Now, in the next image, we can see um, uh, the effects of donation. So, the blue regions here seen in the dorsal medial parietal cortex were associated with uh, increased donations, whereas here in the molateral aspect of the temporal cortex and posterior temporal cortex were associated uh, with decreased donations. As you've heard, the results of this study, along with prior studies using functional neural imaging combined together with our current lesion mapping study, provides evidence of the importance of the frontal lobes in particular in guiding altruistic behavior. And what we hope is that by learning more about the brain mechanisms of altruistic behavior and its related social behaviors, we can use that evidence to promote positive social relations in cultures and the kinds of relations that families desire, particularly in patients undergoing rehabilitation for different forms of neurodegenerative disorders or brain injury. Being a co-author of this article has been full of personal significance to me. I'm doubly indebted to the Vietnam veterans who fought for my freedom at their time, and who now graciously lent me their wounded brains. I've had the privilege myself to study in their brains the neurology of autism, something that they have always known by heart.